welcome to Little Literati. I'm Jess, and I don't know about you, but May for our family was crazy this year. I started the month by going to visit my parents and my sister for four days without the husband or the kids, and I had so much fun on that trip. I had an absolute blast. I got to hang out with my sister, and I got to spend a lot of time with my mom while my dad was working, and it was just such a balm to the soul <laughs> to have some time to myself to just play and have fun. And so I had so much fun, and I will talk about that a little bit later on in this video, but I just wanted to say that May was crazy. And so I did get quite a bit red, but I also had to contend with my daughter's finishing her year of kindergarten. And then we also had at the end of the month, a trip to Idaho for my brother's wedding. So I was able to get some things red, but I had kind of had to shove them in between all of the different events going on. So here is, the month of May. I had kind of mentioned in a previous video, The Sorcerer to the Crown that I read and actually gave it more of a review than I meant to. So I've already kind of talked about that, but I really did enjoy this book a lot. And my husband took my hint on the video and gave it to me for Mother's Day. So I did get this and I really, really enjoyed this book. And I'm thrilled to be able to add it to my alternate Regency period fantasy novels. So I'm hoping that Zen Cho writes a couple more. I think she's supposed to be, but I'm not sure what the ETA is on any of those. But Sorcerer of the Crown was really kind of formally written. It reminded me a lot of the language that was used back in the 19th century and very intricately written. So each of the characters has their very own backstory that does play on the main events of the book, but very concisely written for each character. And so I had really a good time reading Sorcerer of the Crown because everything felt real and the characters ended up where their natural arcs tended. So I thought it ended well as well. So even if she doesn't write more, I thought it ended well enough that it's a great book by itself. So Sources of the Crown. I received Given to the Sea from Fairy Loot and I was really excited about this. I've been excited about this for months. And then I read it and it was just kind of unmemorable. And I think it didn't help that there were, I think, four different viewpoints throughout the book. And we would jump so often between the different characters that it was really hard to form an attachment with any of them. And they just didn't seem very, well, memorable. They just kind of did their thing. And I know there's supposed to be another book, I think it's called Given to the Earth, that comes out next year. I don't know if I'll really go out of my way to look it up. I suppose if it kind of falls into my lap, I might try reading it, but I just didn't love any of the characters well enough to seek out the sequel, which is too bad because I was excited about this. I also read Hunted, which is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but it also combines with elements from Russian folklore, such as the legend of the firebird. And so, I thought that was an interesting take on a very familiar fairy tale. And so this wasn't my favorite version, but I did thoroughly enjoy it at the same time. So in this, the main character is a huntress and she follows after her father. And one day he goes into the woods to, to hunt this great beast that he knows is following him and he never comes home. So she has to go and try to find him. and when she finds her father, she also finds this massive beast and is taken captive. And she is captive for like over a year, I think. And her whole family kind of forgets about her while she is the captive of the beast. And yet there are also other, like I said, fairy tale elements from different cultures that all interweave in between elements from the main story. And so it gives it a very rich, vibrant, tapestry of detail and of story. And so I thought this was really well done. Like I said, not my favorite, but 
very thoroughly well done and I will look forward to buying this next year when it comes out in paper pack. Also, the cover is gorgeous and shimmers. I finally got around to finishing Crooked Kingdom and it wasn't because I didn't want to in previous months, I just kind of got burned out on different books and so I finally got around to reading this in between all the craziness of May and I thought it was a really good follow-up to Six of Crows and that one had kind of left on a cliffhanger and so this one really ties all the stories loose ends together to make it end really very well. She could if she chose to continue the story but it really does wrap up quite nicely in Crooked Kingdom. I really liked all the characters in Six of Crows and so it was nice to be able to re-immerse myself in their minds and their backstories because there's still flashbacks in this book as well as the first one that we see some of their origins and events that made them who they are and why they're part of this crew. So I really liked all of the follow-up stories. There was one event right towards the very end that made me really angry because it felt completely unnecessary and just kind of gratuitously thrown in at the end just to make people angry. And I guess it succeeded because I was quite furious when I read that scene. So that tainted it a little bit for me because I felt that there was no reason to have that happen. But other than that, the story itself was really well done and I really liked all the characters and was glad to see everything wrap up for them. So, Crooked Kingdom. I had looked forward to reading The Great Hunt this month. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get to it, but I managed to squeeze it in. And this one was another one that I was kind of disappointed in. There's sort of insta-love but not even like the good kind of insta-love, if that makes sense. So the two main characters, there's a girl and a boy, and it's, it's a case of they are attracted to each other, but they can't stand each other, and yet they're obviously destined for each other. And it was just kind of hard to really get into that because the guy's kind of a tool, and at some point... I think, I, I get that bad boys are attractive and I think it's the irresistible urge to try to fix the bad boy and so we're drawn to them, at least in literature. But I think there comes a point where you're like, okay, the guy's acting like a complete tool, wash your hands and leave him alone. And I mean, it's not like you're married to the guy. That's a whole other ball of wax that we're not even gonna get into in this video. But if you're just kind of meeting him, you think he's attractive, then you find out he's a jerk, walk away whatever. So The Great Hunt is the first in a duology. I think the second one's called The Great Pursuit. Also, another kind of small gripe I had with this is that the women seem sort of helpless. And it's not that they are helpless. It's just that everyone around them perceives them as helpless. And so they just kind of fulfill everyone else's expectations, which is very infuriating as a woman to see women just kind of passively accepting their roles that are being thrust upon them by society. So the fact that she's a princess and yet has really no power in her own fate or life or anything really rubbed me the wrong way. So I, again, I'll probably eventually read The Great Pursuit. I'm not actively going out and looking for it right now because there are other things I care about more. In the immediate future so I'll probably eventually get around to this but it was just kind of a meh for me. A book that was very much not a meh for me was A Crown of Wishes which is the sequel to The Star Touched Queen by Roshani Chakshi and this book is gorgeous for one. I mean it shimmers and it's pretty and this is the copy that I had bought from book depository and it showed up water damaged. I meant to return this, but I missed, again, with everything going on, with the crazy month I had, I finally was like, okay, I'm going to the post office. And I looked it up and I had missed the return date by like two days. So I guess I'm keeping this copy and then I'll buy another copy when it comes out in 
trade paperback size because this is just ginormous and will not fit on my shelf next to the first book. And so I want a nice uniform size book. So I'll eventually get that. But in the meantime, I guess that means I get to read this whenever I want. So this is sort of an indirect sequel. The first one tells about Maya and her story. And then this is about her sister, Gowry. And she goes to, she, with the help of Vikram, goes to this other world, kind of connected to her sister. And actually, Maya does, does make a cameo appearance, which is kind of a very fun little detail in there kind of nod to the previous story and okay yes it all ended well and so we get to still see her for a brief scene but they go to this other world to the tournament of wishes and they have to win the challenge in order to each win a wish and so there are these different challenges that they have to fulfill and they have to decide whether or not it's worth it to work together to try to achieve their goals or if they're going to butt against each other and every person for themselves. And so I, I really loved the characters. And once again, her writing is so lush and exquisitely beautiful. And the characters are vibrant and real and they are not perfect. And yet they are so perfectly imperfect that they feel real. And they're not just two-dimensional stock characters that fulfill their roles. They live and breathe and they grow. And that is a huge thing for me that this, this book was just completely gorgeous inside and out. So Crown of Wishes is a huge recommendation from me. Loved it. I reread a couple of books this year or this month sorry again i was going at the beginning of the month to a sarah j mass book signing in phoenix and so i reread book one a court of thorns and roses and book two a court of mist and fury and my sister went to the signing with me because i had a, a two-person ticket and didn't know who was going to go with me and she volunteered and she had never read these books but while we were there she bought book one and then she also brought throne of glass by also Sarah J. Mass, which is the first book in the other series that she wrote. And I corrupted my sister and made her read the first book. And she really enjoyed it. And then she bought book two and she was going to take it on the trip to my brother's wedding last week. And she forgot it at home. So she hasn't read this yet, which is killing me because I need to be able to talk to her about it. I need to be able to fangirl about it in person with somebody. And so now I don't get that opportunity anymore because <laughs> I'm not with my sister. But Hopefully she'll read it and love it as well. So you already know how I feel about these books. I've ranted and raved about them in several videos, but they were just as great the second time through. And it was actually really wonderful to reread the first one, knowing what happens in the second book. And you can see certain red flags in behaviors between characters. And you can also see the groundwork being laid and foreshadowing for the next couple of books. So I read books one and two, and then I also read book three. And I, as you know, I collect paperbacks, not hardcovers. And so you had to buy a copy of book three in order to get it into the signing. But then I took it back and returned it before I came home on my flight. So this is not my copy, this is the library's copy. But I did buy it on audiobook and ebook on my Kindle. So I will buy a, a paperback copy when it comes out next year. But in the meantime, I can read it or listen to it at my heart's leisure. So A Court of Wings and Ruin is the third and last book in the Feyre and Reese storyline. However, she is coming out, I think she with three other books. We don't know exactly which characters that's going to cover. But we do know that we get to stay in this world for a few more books, which is going to be fun. This one, however, did wrap everything up really pretty nicely with most of the characters. And so this talks about this great battle that has been looming and threatening for two books now with the King of Highburn. We get to find out about Amarin. And that was, there was a lot of, not mythology, there was a lot of history and 
references and allusions to the Old Testament, which was really interesting to read because you pretty much have a Passover story in here. You pretty much get the story of Exodus, but in a fantasy fairy kingdom, which was really a full, a, a cool, fun, flavorful take on fairy that I would never have thought to put in there. So that was just really fun because it never is overt, but it's very subtly there. And so if you know what you're looking for, that's just a really, I enjoyed it. So A Court of Wings and Ruin, I did cry during this book and not where I probably was expected to cry. And I was, again, on my phone because I was reading it on my Kindle. And so I was reading it and I was completely fine, completely fine. And then in the space of like a page, like a half a page actually, I was full on ugly sobbing, tears pouring down my face, sobbing, couldn't catch my breath. My husband was on the love seat reading his book and he looked up at me with serious concern in his eyes, wondering what on earth was wrong. And I had to give him way too much backstory so that he understood why this specific scene was significant and why I was so emotional about this scene with these specific characters and why it was important. And he thought I was silly, but I was just really surprised that it hit me all of a sudden so strongly, especially as a parent, I got to, to feel emotions I probably wouldn't have if I was just a teenager reading these books, but it really hit me in a really strong way. And so I guess thank you for that. But anyway, this one, I really enjoyed the wrap up of everything. And I am also looking forward to the books in the next uh, bit of the series. I'm excited to see where she goes with that. I wonder if she's going to keep doing mythology and uh, fairy tale themes because the first one is essentially Beauty and the Beast with some old ballads. And then this one has allusions to Snow White. And then of course the second one is Hades and Persephone. And then Old Testament is also in here a little bit. So I, I'm curious to see where she goes in the next few books and I'm excited to see what she does with those. Now I just need to wait for them to come out. So these next two I read on my trip. So I didn't get around to everything I talked about getting to on my trip. And actually I didn't read these, I listened to these on audiobook. But I have copies. And so these were actually rereads for me because I read My Lady Jane several months ago and then I read A Discovery of Witches and have had this whole series um, for several years now. My mom actually introduced me to A Discovery of Witches back when it was first coming out. And actually I think book two had already come out. So it's probably a year after this one came out. But uh, we like to describe it as Twilight for adults. And so there is a witch and there is a vampire in here. But even though this was written after Twilight, this really feels like the original deal. And Twilight kind of feels like the pale teenage imitation of this because this is much more tightly written and the characters are more real as well and you actually care about them and it's not just some klutzy girl who's super plain attracting the eye of this super hot rich vampire. Anyway, I loved Twilight when it came out because I was a teenager and then I went to college and was like, wow, that was a phase of my life that's now over. And then when my mom introduced me, this I was like, oh, well, this is what I was wanting and needing without even knowing I wanted and needed this. So A Discovery Witches is the first book in the All Souls trilogy. Book two is Shadow of Night and book three is Book of Life. And this one, I have actually met Deborah Harkness in person and I got, my first two books signed by her. And actually, I forgot to show it off, but I did get my books signed as well. So I have a handful of signed books now in my collection. I also got to meet Ray Carson at the Sarah J. Mass signing, and I was really mad at myself because I got home and realized I hadn't gotten a picture with her. But she signed and personalized all four of the books that I took to her. And so she was really great to meet as well. And so we actually, a 
couple of weeks ago had a tornado warning in our neighborhood and I came home it was right as I was picking my daughter up from school and I ran home and we have a three level house and so I sent everyone to the basement and they all had their special toys and blankets and things that we always grab just in case the top floor of our house flies off and I had to run upstairs and grab all of my signed books and took them all downstairs with me it was like caressing them until the storm went away just to make sure everything was all fine and our house was fine too but I'm that kind of crazy obsessed about my signed copies of books now so I read a total of 11 books that's counting the the two audiobooks that I read and I would love to hear what you read in the month of May and how many books you ended up reading if you were in school or if you have children who are in school let me know how your end of year festivities went and in the meantime read wonderful books and we will look forward to seeing what you read in june so thank you for staying with me and we'll see you later